Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is part 62 of Tafsir al-Sa'di. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Falamma fasal talut bil junud qala inna Allah mubtalikum bi nahar faman shariba minhu falaysa minni wa man lam yat'amhu fa innahu minni illa man ightarafa ghurfatan biyadihi فشربوا منه إلا قليلا منهم فلما جاوزه هو والذين آمنوا معه قالوا لا طاقة لنا اليوم بجالوت وجنوده فلما جاوزه هو والذين آمنوا معه قالوا لا طاقة لنا اليوم بجالوت وجنوده قال الذين يظنون أنهم ملاق الله كم من فئة قليلة غلبت فئة كثيرة بإذن الله والله مع الصابرين ولما برزوا لجالوت وجنوده قالوا قالوا ربنا أفرغ علينا صبرا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين فهزموهم بإذن الله وقتل داود جالوت وآتاه الله الملك والحكمة وعلمه مما يشاء ولولا دفع الله الناس بعضهم ببعض لفسدت الأرض ولكن الله ذو فضل على العالمين تلك آيات الله نتلوها عليك بالحق وإنك لمن المرسلين When Talut set out with the troops he said Allah will test you with a river Whoever drinks from it does not belong with me and whoever does not drink from it and whoever does not drink from it does belong with me and anyone who scoops up a little with his hand will be excused but they all drank from it except a few when they crossed the river he and those who believed with him they said we do not have the strength to face Jalut and his troops today but those who were certain that they would meet Allah said how often has a small group overcome a mighty host by Allah's leave? And Allah is with those who are steadfast. When they came against Jalut and his troops, they said, Our Lord, bestow on us steadfastness and make us stand firm and grant us victory over the disbelieving people. Thus, they defeated them by Allah's leave. And Dawood slew Jalut, and Allah gave him power and wisdom, and taught him whatever else he will. Were it not for Allah restraining the people, some by the means of others, the earth would indeed be filled with mischief. But Allah is most gracious to all the worlds. These are the revelations of Allah, which we recite to you in truth. Verily, you are one of the messengers. When Talut became king of the children of Israel, and became established in his position, they made preparations to fight their enemies. When Talut set out with the Israelite troops, who were huge in numbers, he tested them on Allah's command to show who would be steadfast and assured and who would not. He said, Allah will test you with a river. Whoever drinks from it does not belong with me. Because he is disobedient and cannot follow us because of his lack of patience and steadfastness, because of his lack of patience and steadfastness and his disobedience. But whoever does not drink from it does belong with me. And anyone who scoops up a little with his hand will be excused. And there will be no blame on him for that. It may be that Allah will be it may be that Allah will put blessing in it and it will suffice him. This test indicates that the supply of water was little in order to test them. The majority of them disobeyed him and drank from the river in the manner that was forbidden and they changed their minds about fighting their enemies. Their lack of patience in refraining from the water for a short while 
offered the greatest evidence that they had no patience for the fight, which would be lengthy and would involve a great deal of hardship. Their turning back from the rest of the army increased the trust in Allah for those who remained steadfast and made them more earnest and beseeching Allah, humbling themselves before him and declaring that they had no power or strength of their own. It also increased them in patience because they were few and their enemies were numerous. Hence Allah Azza wa Jal says, when they crossed the river, he, that is Talud, and those who believed with him, namely the ones who had obeyed and, namely the ones who had obeyed the command of Allah and had not drunk from the river, which was forbidden, they realized how few they were and how numerous their enemies were. They said, that is, many of them said, we do not have the strength to face Jalut and his troops today because they are numerous, because they are so numerous and so well equipped. But those who were certain that they would meet Allah, who were people of steadfastness, faith and deep certainty, they sought to reassure the rest of them, calm them down and instruct them to be steadfast. How often has a small group overcome a mighty host by Allah's leap, that is, by His will? For all matters rest with Him. The one who has real honor is the one who is honored by Allah. And the one who is really humiliated is the one who is humiliated by Allah. Hence, large numbers are to no avail if He forsakes you. And small numbers do not matter if He helps you. And Allah is with those who are steadfast by giving them support and help. The best means of attaining the help of Allah is being patient and steadfast for the sake of Allah. This exhortation had a great impact on their hearts. Hence, when Jalut and his troops came out to fight, they said, all of them said, our Lord bestow on us steadfastness. That is, strengthen our hearts, bestow patience on us and make us steadfast so that we will not be shaken or flee and grant us victory over the disbelieving people. Hence, we know that Jalut and his troops were disbelievers. Allah answered their supplication because they fulfilled the conditions of receiving a response and he granted victory over them and he granted victory to them. Thus, they defeated them by Allah's leave and Dawood who was with the troops of Talut slew Jalut. He killed the king of the disbelievers with his own hand because of his courage, strength and steadfastness. And Allah gave him power and wisdom. That is, he blessed him by making him king of the Israelites and by giving him wisdom, meaning prophethood, which included knowledge of the great law and the straight path. Hence he said, and taught him whatever else he willed of both religious and political knowledge. Allah bestowed upon him both kingship and prophethood, whereas in the case of the prophets who came before him, kingship was given to others. When Allah Azza wa Jal granted them victory, they felt secure in their land and they worshipped Allah in safety and with reassurance because they had defeated the enemy and had gained power in the land. Allah of this was the result, all of this was the result of jihad for his sake. Otherwise, they would not have attained that. Hence, Allah Azza wa said, were it not for Allah restraining the people, some by the means of others, the earth would indeed be filled but with, the earth would indeed be filled with mischief. That is, were it not for him restraining by means of those who fight for his sake, the plots of the evildoers and the transgressions of the disbelievers, the earth would be the earth would be filled with mischief as a result of the disbelievers gaining control of it and establishing the rituals of disbelief, and they, i.e., the disbelievers, would prevent them, i.e., the believers, from worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal and practicing His religion openly. But Allah is most gracious to all the worlds as he has prescribed for them jihad, in which is their happiness and protection. And he gives them 
power on earth by means that they know and others that they do not know. Then Allah Azza wa Jal says, these are the revelations of Allah, which we recite to you with truth. That is, in truth, concerning which there is no doubt. This implies that we would, this implies that we should think, learn, and see things as they really are. Verily, you are one of the messengers. This is a testimony. This is a testimony from Allah to his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that part of the evidence for his message is the stories that Allah has told him about previous nations and the prophets and their followers and enemies. If Allah did not tell him about that, he would have no knowledge of it. In fact, there was no one among his people who had any knowledge of these matters. This indicates that he is indeed the messenger of Allah and his true prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam whom he sent with truth and with the religious whom he sent with truth and with the religion of truth so that it might prevail over all religions even if the polytheists dislike that this story contains signs and wonders that serve as a reminder to people of understanding they include the following for the decision makers to be united and to examine different options before choosing the best and acting upon it is the greatest means of advancing and attaining their goals, as happened in the case of these chiefs when they consulted with, when they consulted the prophet about appointing a king whom they could rally behind and bring their scattered community together and they would obey. The more the truth is challenged and specious arguments are produced against it, the clearer and more distinct it becomes, and the more certainty can be attained thereby, as happened in the case of these people when they objected to the appointment of Talut as their king. They were given answers by means of which they became convinced and all doubts and specious arguments were dispelled. Knowledge and insight combined with the power to implement decisions are the two qualities which together lead to perfect performance in positions of authority. However, lacking one of them or both of them will damage leaders Lacking one of them or both of them will damage a leader's performance. Relying on oneself is a cause of failure and being forsaken by Allah, whereas seeking the help of Allah with patience and turning to Him is a cause of victory. The former is reflected in their words to the Prophet. How could we refuse to fight in the cause of Allah when we have been turned out of our homes and separated from our children? Chapter 2, verse 246. It was as if that was the reason why, when fighting was ordained for them, they turned away. The latter is reflected in the words, When they came out against Jalut and his troops, they said, Our Lord, bestow on us steadfastness and make us stand firm, and grant us victory over the disbelieving people. Thus they defeated them by Allah's leave. Chapter 2, verse 250 and 251. The wisdom of Allah Azza wa Jal dictates that evil be distinct from good, true be distinct from false, and patience be distinct from cowardice. We would not have left, he would not have left the people as they were mixed and no, he would not have left the people as they were mixed and not distinct from one another. By his mercy and according to his way, he restrains the harm caused by disbelievers and hypocrites by means of the believers. He restrains the harm caused by disbelievers and hypocrites by means of believers who fight. Were it not for that, the world would be filled with mischief when it was overtaken by disbelief and its symbols. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.